Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. I don't got no form, man. I don't do no questions. Mm-hmm. We just gonna be fair. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I, all right. I, I really would like to um, start off because um, it, you know a lot of things have been said um, that are completely untrue, and and I have been you know taking shots, and I don't you know I don't mind. I I, I get it. I'm fair game. Mm-hmm. I'm fair game, and um, but I just want to set the the record straight. Um, and there's a couple of things that I'm you know. Uh, I'm going to make it a clear cut um, break away um, from, you know, from uh, one particular brother who has chosen um, to say some completely untrue things and some extremely misleading uh, things about uh, and stretching uh, the, the truth was stretched so far that it was no longer the truth. Mm-hmm. So I just want to make the make that record straight, and then I'm, I'm you know, then I'm going to um, let brother, you know, s- s- you know, say some things mm-hmm. as well. But I just want to make the record clear. This day, uh, June the third, twenty twenty one, I am severing all ties and any in any way, shape, or form relationship with Terrence Pathir, also known as uh, Amin Muhammad. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, recognize me, doesn't see me uh, as a Muslim, and that's fine, because that is, Allah has that power. He has given that authority to us to accept or reject, and he has chosen to reject the fact and does not recognize me as a Muslim. So one thing that I am not, <clears throat> And that I never was and I never will be. I'm not a cheek turner. I'm not going to let anyone just continue to attack me. And then I'm just going to just turn over cheek. I never did that. Uh, I never did that pre-Islam. During Islam at, right up to now. And from here on out the rest of my life. I will never be someone who will turn over cheek. So uh, the brother wants to recognize me as a rat. He sees he, he allows other people uh, to attack me, knowing that, you know, the the uh, the things that are said are, are are blatantly false. And he's OK with that. So that clearly shows that, you know, that he does not recognize me uh, as a Muslim. So therefore, I don't recognize him as a Muslim. So, you know, don't extend your hand. Don't extend your greeting because it will be nothing forthcoming. So, you know. Uh, return the greetings to the chitlin eating creation worshiping Marty Small. You greet him, you have more regard to him with regards to him. Someone who worships creation, someone is just a foul human being. And I, uh, and, and you have the audacity to say that this guy has integrity. That's a disgrace. So, anyway, I'm not going to. Uh, give him any more of my time. I'm just going to move on away from, from, from that part. So I just want to make that clear. Those people who hate me, I hate them more. Those people who love me, I love them more. Those people who don't like me, I dislike them more. Those people who like me, I like them more. So I don't blindly um, have any allegiance to anyone, and I don't blindly like or love and associate with anyone. My eyes is wide open because I know all human beings are fallible, including myself. So, you know, uh, our, uh, our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't love so much because one day you may, you, know, you, may have to hate, you may have to hate that person. And don't hate so much that one day you may have to love that person. So at this point, I don't see any, any, um, any reciprocity any, in any way, shape or form. So I, I see what I see. And 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 as I said, I see that he does not recognize me. And to be honest with you, it doesn't matter. I don't need his recognition. I don't need anyone's recognition because they don't feed me. They didn't. They weren't the ones that have decreed for me to be in uh, uh, be a part of creation. So they don't feed me and never will. And they had absolutely nothing to do with 
how I came here and they will have nothing to do with how I leave here. So I know who is in control and has the power over all. So that's the way it is. But I just wanted uh, one thing that uh, that he has harped on during uh, one of his khutbahs uh, at uh, Master Jim Muhammad is that, you know, and I knew he was talking about me. And people who had a little bit of information also knew that he was talking about me. He said uh, something that it was extremely false that I was attempting to get um, take the masjid from him. First of all, I didn't know that it was his masjid. I thought it was the masjid. The masjid doesn't belong to a person. Um, I know that there was uh, an opportunity and I was and, and I was exposed to trying to um, have uh, to help the community to uh, have a uh, Islamic center in the center of town to help uh, the Muslims who who did not have the, the ways or mean or feel comfortable going all the way over on Albany Avenue. And that, that was an opportunity and I wanted us to be able to take advantage of it. But because of his hatred and his dislike for me, since I was the one who uh, brought the, the idea, then of course he rejected it, not on merit, but on his hatred in his heart for me. Um, I was not trying to take the masjid. I don't want that masjid or any masjid, I don't, I, that, that was not my intention. That was not in my heart. And um, I had the idea or what Allah had blessed me to see, I freely and openly shared it with him and said, this is, what, this is the p potential that, that this has. But instead, he plotted from day one to undermine everything because it was not his idea. And I still, it didn't matter to me. Because you know what? I know what, it, what my intentions were. I'm getting reward for it. If, that, if it never came into fruition, I know because I believe in the law and the law rewards those who are sincere. And that was my intentions was sincere. And I knew, and as I know right now, that I will be rewarded as though there was a masjid there or Islamic center there. I get the same reward right if it happened or not, because that was my intention. My intentions were pure. Right, so I, I got a question. So, because what I heard when that was going on back then was that the reason why, and I'm not saying I heard that from him, so, like, right. you know, but what I was told was the reason why that didn't go through was because the community would have had to give up the masjid in order to get the other building. That's not true. Originally, that was something that um, we had discussed, and I thought on the face of it, it still was, at that part was still a good idea. But after really thinking about it and, and, and really being sincerely looking at, at it and seeing how other entities had, did not have to give up what they had, and they still were able to gain more, then, then that should have also applied to us. So then I rethought, I backed up, and I said, you know what? No, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to swap anything. We can keep Masjid Muhammad there and we, can, we should still be able to have the Islamic Center at which where, where uh, the James Ushery Daycare Center was. We had an opportunity and we and we still could have had both of them. But because of his interference and because of his his uh, uh, hatred in his heart and animosity he has towards me, that he decided um, let let uh, told Marty Small. Let the Boys and Girls Club have it. We don't want it. We don't want it. Even though, um, you know, it wasn't his idea. It wasn't all about him. But like I said, I, I didn't want to be, um, I wanted to bring it to the forefront and then step back because I, I didn't want any controversy about me. So I didn't want it to be about me. So I stepped off and said, you guys take it from here. And what he did was he destroyed the whole idea and then turned and said that, I was trying to take Masjid Muhammad. No, far from that. I, you know, I, I, I just wanted something better for our community, an opportunity where we can service uh, our community in many ways from that uh, James Ushery Center. It had so much potential um, right in the center of, of, of our community. It had so much potential and I, and I was able to see it. But obviously, you know, he couldn't see it because he's unable to see past his, his hatred for me. So then what, what, so what, what do you think about, so 
See, I, I don't want to start. I don't want to, to create no more divide. I would like to fix stuff if possible. But like, if you want to, like, you, what you got to say about the stuff he was saying, like that you always cause, like, um, what he, what was the word he used? You always cause destruction. Destruction. <laughs> mm -hmm. What have I destroyed? I haven't destroyed anything. Every time that I've uh, done something, um, if, if it be politics, if it was uh, coaching, you know, children and baseball, little, whatever I did, the things that I do to try to empower people and try to uh, make things better for our, our community and, and particularly the younger people to get them in a position where things would be better. I've always done that. I haven't tried. Only thing I will destroy, I will destroy uh, ideologies or people who have ideologies to do harm and only are looking out for their own self-interest. Me as a uh, involved in politics, I haven't made really any money on that. I really, I take, I've taken a loss uh, as far as you know, uh, financially. But I, as I said, I look for things post this life because you know this life is short. I'm 62 years old. I, you know, what I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be able to be alive uh, these amount of years. So I know that my tomorrows are far fewer than my yesterdays. So I'm prepared. I'm trying to, you know, do things that where when I'm laying in Barzac or when I'm in Barzac that, you know, I can have something that comes back to me and rewards it that puts me in a better position, you know, to receive mercy from my rob. And that's what it's all about. And I, have, I don't uh, go out and try to destroy anything, but I will not. If someone gives their word and they say they're going to do X, Y, and Z, and then and in reality they never had any intention of fulfilling what they said they was going to do, then we're going to fight. We're going to have, we're going to, we're going to rumble. We're going to, if it's, if it's, if it's politics or, you know, whatever the, uh, um, you know, whatever the platform is, we're going to, we're going to fight over that because you, um, came and, and you came into power under false promises and you never had any intention of fulfilling. You was only looking to fill your own pocket. And I have a problem with that. And that's when, when, when that happens, I have a falling out with people, but I don't try, I haven't tried to destroy anything. Um, there's a lot of things, you know, that I have done, but I don't toot my own horn. I don't, you know, I don't want to diminish anything, as I said, and I'm going to continue to say I'm concerned about the afterlife. So whatever I did and whatever I do, I want it to be from my heart. And I don't want anyone, uh, and I don't want to say, you know, well, I did this, I did that. I don't want to do that because I know for a fact. Then that shows that you're not sincere and you diminish so what your reward. So that not with the intention of, of tooting your horn, but what did you do? So that counters what? The other side sees. It, it, you know, let me say this: If the other side did something, then I would, you know, uh, I, I would say something. Mm -hmm. But they haven't done anything. I have done a lot of things, but I'm not going to say the things that I do because I don't want to diminish them. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of, you know, things that I, uh, I have done. There has been a lot of uh, people that I have helped, and I will continue to do. But I'm not going to name them because I think that's a sign of you know, self-glorification and, and arrogance. Yeah, yeah. And, and then that will diminish what I, you know, what I have coming from uh, mercy and, and, and forgiveness from my rob. So that's, this is what I'm looking forward to. Um, but what have I destroyed? I, I haven't destroyed anything. I tried my best to uplift. That's all I've ever done. You know, my, my thing was is that I never wanted to be uh, an elected official. Because I know there's the traps of that. And I know that, you know, you can do more on the outside uh, of, of politics to, you know, uh, help people than from being on the other side of the, of, of the table. Because when you become an elected official, you become constricted. There's, you know, you have so many um, things that, you know, you're, you're, you're tied down with things that you can't do, even though your intentions may be good. But I knew going in that I would not be able to do that, and that's why I wound up being in the situation that you know that um, that I was. But no, I, I you know, I, 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 let me let me say this: I've created a, a lot of opportunities for first-time home owners in Atlantic City. I made sure that um, when the 
um, the the people who um, the, I'm trying to think of the foundation that Jimmy Carter is uh, when they build houses, mm -hmm. and 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 I had a problem with it because in Atlantic City I wanted them they were getting land for free and they were still uh, people were still um, you know paying high mortgages. So my thing was, I was like, listen, no, we're not going to give you that land for free. That's Habitat for Humanity, I remember it now. I said, no, we're not going to give you the land when uh, we're giving you the land. And then you're getting free, uh, almost 100 percent free uh, 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 labor. So why are people paying for a, a mortgage on a house, you know, 80, 90, 100 some thousand dollars when you got the land and all labor free? So we're, why, why should we turn, or, turn over the, the property of the city of Atlantic City to an organization that's supposed to be helping people and the people's mortgages are still high? Mm -hmm. And I, I said, no, we're not going to do it. Before we do that, you don't get anything. And we'll, we'll, we'll find another entity that will make sure that uh, people are going to have real affordable housing. So that, that, that's a couple things that I, that I did. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm extremely proud of that. Um, there are some small things that, that I am really, really proud that I had something to do with. And it was like I made sure that the people from the Ellie House, the senior citizen and disabled people, made sure that they, that's one of the only mailboxes still left on the north side. That was because I made sure that that happened. So, so and, and I and because that was important because those poor people didn't have, you know, to be able to have, you know, be able to. Uh, have a mailbox right there, a convenience. I made sure to have. I'm extremely proud of that. That's small, but it's big. Mm -hmm. And I also was the one who made sure that the Atlantic City Hospital is where it is right now. Mm -hmm. And and we made sure we invested in that to make sure that that uh, hospital stayed there. And we have a state of the art, um, you know, uh, emergency and surgical where they have had the opportunity. Unfortunately, to save a lot of young people's lives because of, of uh, a serious gunshot yeah. victims, um, that was something that I made sure happened. There was a lot of controversy about it, and I I stuck my hand my my, my hand out and I said, "Listen, we're going to have you know this uh, Atlantic City Medical Center is going. We're going to make sure that they invest into Atlantic City, and Atlantic City is going to invest in them, and that's how that hospital got there. Mm -hmm. I also made sure that the soldiers' home." That was that, you know, the uh, people who wanted to tear it down and the veterans said, no, let's let's renovate and let's expand it a little bit and do it. I made sure that that happened in a very short period of time under my leadership. I made sure that it happened. And at the same time, I made sure that local minority professionals, laborers and 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 uh, skilled uh, 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 trades. African America made sure that they played a, a role in the uh, renovation of the All Wars Memorial Building, and that that those are just a, a, a few things, and we can go on and on and on. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I don't, you know, I just you asked, so I wanted to give a few because I, I just thought about it. I said, if I don't, you know, people say, oh, really? See, see, he really didn't do it because you know, I, I, but you know, but whatever. I, I can take criticism, but I know one thing that. Alhamdulillah, Allah is the all-knowing, knowing, and he's, he's al alam. But not only that, really, that is really incomplete because Allah is not the all-knowing. He is the all-pre-knower. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you can't be the creation, the creator of the heaven and the earth, and uh, you find out at the time that your creation did something. Yeah. So we know that Allah is the all pre knower, yeah. so we find out, and you know, in, in, in our time, but the law already knew yeah. because he is the he is the creator, mm -hmm. and so, but so I'm gonna leave that at that, and I'm not gonna um, say anything more about that to diminish in any way, shape, or form. But I beg a law to uh, have mercy on me and give me some some coolness during that time. I beg a law for that, and I beg for that for. All Muslims, and you know that that for that as well, for for them to also um, receive those rewards of mercy and uh, forgiveness from from our Rob. I mean, and so we're, we're, we're then so your, your beef, y'all, well not your beef, but the beef that happened with you, you and the mayor, like how that 
<laughs> well, let me give you the history of it. Marty Small um, is my junior by quite a few years. Um, you know, he was um, spent a lot of time with former mayor, the, 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 the deceased mayor, uh, Jim Whalen. And um, he thought he understood politics, but really, he really didn't understand politics because Jim Whalen didn't understand politics. Um, one thing that I am proud of that I have been uh, blessed to have the opportunity to have some uh, understanding and some knowledge of politics. And, and I um, inter related with, 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 with Marty and tried my best to uh, be a mentor, a political mentor of his, uh, to, to help him um, because I know that he had um, aspirations to, you know, to run for office and, and one day, you know, go higher and higher and higher. And, and I, um, I helped him as, as much as I could. But uh, he decided that um, he wanted to pull away, pull away. But my concern was that who he tied himself with. And I tried to warn him. Um, so Marty calls me all these names. <laughs> he calls me a rat and all this. But one thing he doesn't say and he won't admit, but Allah, who subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-knower, the all-pre-knower, knows that Marty was that close from being my cellmate. Not because I was wearing a wire and trying to do something to him, because if I wanted him, I could have I buried him. But that was not, you know, that was not my thing. That's not what I wanted to do. I protected him, and I told him, because someone told me, See, you don't understand that things happen for a reason. The law put me in that position. I didn't understand why. But now one of the things was I was able to save a couple people. He was one of the ones who, who was saved because he was trying to get money illegally from the informant who set me up. But, the, but, but for whatever reason, the guy had a heart and came to me and said, listen, Marty Small keeps asking me for money. Bro, I don't want to hurt any more black people. Tell him to stop because next time he comes, I'm going to have to turn him in because I don't know if he's working with these people or not. He says, but I'm telling you, please tell him. I went to Marty and I told him, don't you never, ever ask anybody for any money. If you want something, if you need something, ask me. I'll make sure that you get it. But he will never say that. And he doesn't have to say it because, like I said, Allah knows what happened and I know what happened and what role I played in it. so he can try to play like he's you know he's clean and he's never done anything wrong he's done anything wrong but he does you know him and others don't understand that basically there's two type of people in this world and it's by Allah's decree some people get punished some people get caught some people get put in, in situations and some people don't. That doesn't mean that they didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So that's, you know, so when Marty and I parted ways, Marty was involved with some people who wanted, who did some very, very vicious things to some politically innocent people in my family. And that was Joe Jacobs and, and others. They did some very, very vicious things to my niece. You know, it was to get back at me, but she was innocent of, of, of my politics. And they, you know, they, they beheaded her as far as her opportunity to advance. Took her job away from her when she was only one day away from being, uh, being permanent. And Marty was down with that because his wife, Laquetta, was the benefactor. But, you know, was the benefactor of that because that's how she became the principal at Uptown School. But, uh, you know, so that's where we had one of the reasons, one of the things that we had a falling out. The other thing that we had a falling out, also, my, my wife was a victim of, you know, of people trying to, hurt, they hurt her to get to me. So, and Marty was one of the ones who allowed it to happen. And when the time came for, for it to be corrected, Marty stabbed my wife in the back. And, I, and that's one of the things that really broke off our uh, re relationship. But being a, uh, 
a forgiving and kind person. Um, you know, after, you know, he was defeated. Like another thing that he says is not true. He said, I never defeated him. Not true. <laughs> Frank Gilliam whipped him because those vote by males that came in, that over 700 that came in when he was up by 200 something, those came from who? It came from our organization. So, Marty, we did defeat you when you, you, know, you wet the floor with your tears. Yeah. So, we did defeat you. So, but then we realized that some things had taken place and it's time to let bygones be bygones and let's try to move forward and try to get some things done for our community. So we came together and unfortunately we knew that, Fr unfortunately Frank had gotten to um, some, some problems. We knew it was just a matter of time before that ultimately, you know, uh, uh, became the, the political demise of uh, Frank. And we saw it coming, so we met. Marty wanted, uh, you know, he said, oh, it's enough, you know, it's enough for everybody to have something. And um, I didn't uh, object to that. I don't have, I didn't have any problem. I think because there is enough in, in this, in that small city of Atlantic City where there shouldn't be anyone who, who really has a, a, a want and, and, and not being able to uh, prosper if that's what you want to do. So he said, you know, uh, you know, Joe Jacobs is my man. I, you know, and, and I know that, you know, I know that Joe Jacob is Joe Jacobs is an evil person. And I know that Marty talks about me wanting to be a, a puppeteer, a puppet master. That's what Joe Jacobs is. Joe Jacobs right now, he controls Atlantic City. He controls the housing authority. He controls the school board. He controls City Hall and he controls the MUA. He has all four corners of the most important entities of the city of Atlantic City. And he tells Marty what to do. That's why Steve Persky is in his office. Okay? So um, Steve Persky was uh, Joe Jacobs' mentor. And Joe Jacobs is a very vicious, evil person. And, you know, he has done a lot of harm to a lot of, you know, uh, people in our city. So when the time came, uh, prior to, before Frank, uh, you know, ultimately he had to leave office, we said we would help Marty. We would stand by you, Marty. We would help you become the mayor, if, you know, if and when this happens to Frank. So when the time came, um, uh, I had to, I started mending some of the, healing some of the, the wounds of an Atlantic City Democratic Party because a lot of people didn't like Marty, including uh, my close family members, including my wife. And, uh, but I wanted to be able to, you know, let's, let's, let's move forward. Let's try to, you know, let's give Marty a chance he had been on city council for, you know, 15, 16 years at that time. And I had saw some, um, a little bit of hope and some life of maturity in Marty. So I thought maybe that, you know, the time had come that maybe he, the, the baton could be passed to him. So I asked him just prior to the, the uh, uh, a couple of nights before the vote took place with the Atlantic City Democratic Committee. Um, my brother and I, we, we, we reached out to Marty and told him, listen, you got to cut ties with Joe Jacobs because it was going because I knew that if we didn't cut ties with Joe Jacobs, it would be status quo business as usual. It would be, you know, what I mean, uh, um, just uh, changing hats and everything under the hat is the same. So I said, cut ties with Joe, because if you don't, it's a deal breaker. He panicked. He called his, his, all his people together, you know, wanted to have a meeting. He said, let's meet. So we met. And I told him, it's, you know, if Joe doesn't go, it's a deal breaker. So it was Ernest Corsi, Floyd Talley, LaQuay Zaire, uh, and myself, my, my brother and myself. And we met under, uh, at the uh, Surf State in Corsi's little, little office downstairs. And we aired out some of you know, the, our concerns. And my position never changed. Joe got to go, or it's a deal breaker. But he thought that I was going to break my word. I never said I was going to break my word. I said it was a deal breaker. And the deal breaker was, for, as far as I can, was concerned, that you know, we, we, we gave our word, we're going to keep our word. 
I, I, which I gave my word. My brother really never wanted to do it, you know, but I, I uh, you know, my, my leadership, you know, within the family when it comes to your know, uh, politics and things of that nature, uh, I am well respected and listened to um, by my uh, older family members. And um, uh, unfortunately, they did listen to me when it came to that. I wish they would have put more pressure on, on me and I probably would have said no. It's going to be a 100% deal breaker. But I kept my word. I honored my word. And because of my close relationship with, 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 with Tyler, Floyd Talley, that's one of the main reasons why I kept my word because he loved Marty so much and he wanted him to be the mayor. And, you know, I said I would do it. And I, and I kept my word. So people don't understand. <clears throat> they said, oh, Marty said, oh, I wanted to control him. He said, I control the Lion City Democratic Committee. So if I control the Atlantic City Democratic Committee, then how did you become the mayor? If I was the one who said that, you know, I had to control you and I'm going to destroy you, how did you become the mayor? So all of those who are eating and feeding off of Marty becoming the mayor, you owe it to me. If, if it was about me, then you owe it to me because I was the one that made sure Marty became the mayor. There were people who did not want to vote for Marty under no circumstances, but they had such fondness and love and respect for me that they did it for me. So that's another falsehood that I want to control. Marty, you would have never been the mayor. And all of those who, you know, who are feeding off of you right now, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have anything because you would have never been the mayor. I have regrets about that only because he has become treacherous on steroids. Oh, no, so. <laughs> He's become a monster instead of someone. See, I don't live in this. Yeah, so yeah. He, 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 if, if, if you see how he carries himself, mm. this is really, it's a disgrace the way this guy is just, you know, carrying himself and everything's about him. And he's extremely arrogant. And he's a very vicious person, but he's a coward. But most tyrants are cowards. Mm -hmm. True. And I see more characteristics of the person he says he hates so much politically and really hates because he's always talking about Donald Trump. They're splitting images of characteristics. Why? They're exactly the same. When they speak, they lie. They take credit for other people's work. They're not that intelligent. They're extremely vicious. And they are a coward. He was a coward. Trump was a coward. Marty's a coward. And he can say anything he want. He called me a Trump supporter. But one thing that I will say, there's only one condition that I would vote for Donald Trump. And that's if he ran against Marty, because Trump is a little bit better than Marty. So people benefited from me keeping my word and allowing Marty Small to fulfill his lifetime dream of being a mayor when I could have stopped it. And I did. But he won't give credit for that. And, you know, unfortunately, my family and others always remind me, you made him. And you deal with him. So I have to, I, you know. Any and everything that I can, I'm trying to put that fire out on that little boy to stop him from, you know, doing more harm to our city and to himself. So, you know, Marty's not in my league politically, and I'm not being, but I'm telling you, I've been around a lot of heavyweight political people, and I know I'm better than them. There's no doubt about it. That's what Allah has rewarded me with. I don't know why, but I, I'm, I'm grateful to whatever gifts that, that my Lord has given me. And that's one of them is this political thing. I've been all over this country and I know I can, I'm better than all of those consultants. And given the opportunity, I'd wipe all of them out because, because Allah has given me a gift and I'm grateful for it. But I don't want to get tied down in you know, little, you know, little marble fight games with Marty Small and these others. I, I, I'm, not, I'm way above that. Here's the thing. Like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't live there. And I think just like when they was here, I told them the same thing. I don't live there. 
I don't vote there. I don't got nothing to do with nothing in the city other than I know all of y'all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't got no, I don't know allegiance to one side or another. Or just, you know, I love all y'all. We all Muslim. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody call me. And, yeah, I hope. No problem. Yeah. We'll do. But one of the things that, you know, and if you want to talk about it, you talk about it. But this is the thing that always boggles me when, because I don't know. I never even had this conversation with you, but I don't know all the specifics or nothing. But every time when somebody calls you a rat, right? My thing always is, but you worked with them before. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I don't know how that, you know, like that's the yeah. part that confused me about politics. I know sometimes mm -hmm. that shit just go like that. Like maybe y'all be beefing and next time you got to align with your enemies. And maybe that's just a political thing. I could never be a politician because I'm, I'm. Yeah, but yeah. you know, I, 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 can, bro, I can get by that. I mean, I'm big. Come on, well, you call why, somebody so why, name. But why they, my thing well, is, why, but, why they call you that thing? Because they think, listen. listen. They think that's gonna hurt me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They think that oh, I'm, I'm gonna tell everybody he's a rat. You know, they think that that's going to diminish, you know, my, my relationship with people. But little do they know, that's made me that made a stronger relationship with the people that are, that that who have a good relationship, who love me and I love them. Mm -hmm. You know, because they don't, you know, uh, they don't not listening to that. You think by because. Marty Small and, and some other little little people are calling me, you know, a rat, a wire wire rat. But, I, you know, I don't own an explanation to them. I don't, you know, you know I, I could, I could um, no matter what I say, they're going to say, oh, you know, but, but it doesn't matter. You know, so um, I'm not going to feed peanuts to, you know, to, to, these, to these people. But, you know, they, they do it to try to di diminish me. But... They won't say, like, for example, the night of the meeting uh, when we when we uh, chose Marty Small to be the can to be the recommendation from Atlantic City Democratic Committee, Marty was constant. Craig, we got the votes. We going. I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. I said, bro, I gave my word. You know, he still thought because of that meeting that we had a couple nights ago that I was going to go back on my word, but I kept my word. I'm honor. I was, I'm honorable. Um, and and I, and I could have broke my word, and it still would have been honor because I knew that he wasn't going to do what was right. But I thought that maybe there would be some guardrails that would stop this guy. But now there aren't any guardrails. Um, so you know, he begged me to help him get the. After he became the interim mayor, he begged me. I went to his. I went to his uh, office. And Bruce Weeks was there, and there was a police officer there, and Kashawn McKinley was there. And I told him, I said, Marty, you don't need the line to be pan. You need the line to be pan. You need the line to get, you know, you, you, yeah, man, you know, I'm, I was like, nah. You know, and even after, and we worked together to stop the, you know what I mean, to defeat the question. Because, and I worked with him. And I would do that even again if I would work with him if I knew it was going to be in the best interest and was going to make Atlantic City better. I would do that again. And I did work with him. I sat back for like eight months and people had offered me a significant amount of money to work with that to change that form of government. And I didn't because it's not about money. And I worked with, you know, I, I, I wound up working with Marty. I saved him from his own stupid stupidity and the way that he was trying to defeat the question he was going to help the question he was helping the question you know to be successful so i finally i stepped back i said listen i'm going to go ahead but this is this is the plan and this is how we did it and you know and i stepped back and i said mark go ahead you can take credit for it because it wasn't about you know it was about trying to save our city and make things better for our city but they try to say i'm a rat because they want to try to um diminish my my uh, my relationship with people, but it's not working because all of these negative things that they're saying about me. Well, how is it that I'm still, you know, beloved by a lot of people? It's because of my sincerity and, and and my very good relationship and being sincere about interacting with people and not looking for anything in return for it. So people understand that, and so you know that's that's not any harm at all. But, you know, the, the things that Marty is saying, he, he's, he calls me a rat. But I, I don't really want to go back and forth with that. 
because I know there's a lot of things that I could point to about not only him, but a lot of other people who, you know, who, who, who did some things that they said that I did, but I didn't do. But that's, that's okay. That's, that, that's okay. Because, you know, Allah knows and people who know me, they, they know that that is not my, who I am. So, um, but, you know, but there are a lot of people who don't like me because they think I'm trying to take something from them. Uh, I'm trying to bring something back to our city. Uh, and we, that's the reason why I'm opposing Martin because he's not fit, he's not qualified to be, so, you know, the, the mayor of a city of Atlanta. Right, with city. that said, though, and to be fair, this is what it be seeming like. So, look like everybody trying to do the same thing, but got different ways of going about it. So, there's always going to be a constant button in the head. Like, it's, if everybody I know that gets involved in politics, they all say the same thing. I'm trying to help the city. Trying to help my people, trying to help the neighborhood, and then you trying to do that, and he trying to do that, and everybody trying to do the same thing, but everybody disagreeing on how to do it. That's why I never got involved in this. Well, well, well. The thing, the the the, the, the difference is, is that you know I, I really understand the challenges of Atlantic City, and I know that they can be corrected, and Marty really doesn't. He doesn't understand uh, because you know he just doesn't have the intellectual capacity to understand even just simple things because he's so preoccupied about himself and what he can get out of. Everything is becomes about him and not really becomes about our city. So and, do you think he's ill-intended? Because he don't seem like an ill-intended person. That's, that's well, the, well, you don't know him. Yeah, I don't know him. <laughs> you, know. you don't know him. He is a very ill-intended person, and he has made that clear. This guy has hurt a lot of people, and now it is, you know, it's, you know, even if you're if you're not with me, you're my enemy, and I'm declaring war on you. So you know, uh, 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 the criteria for uh, you know to to have to be an employee of the city of Atlantic City is you gotta you know, you gotta bow down to Marty Small. And even if you you know I I, I don't want to get involved in politics, that's not even you know an option. If you're not involved in politics and helping me. Then you're my enemy, and I'm gonna take everything that I can away from you. I want to destroy you, and he has done that. Um, and it's 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 sickening that that you know the way he carries himself. It's like you are either you're with me or you're against me, and that's his you know his mindset. And then he has his you know his uh, his little boy behind a little choir behind him, and they're always constantly pushing him to you know to do things. Marty, you know what I mean? And he you know they you know. They, uh, Whatever they say, he's listening, you know, you know, like remember the guy from the time to put the mirror up. That's them. <laughs> so, you know, and, 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 and I equated to this. I said, listen, and I said this to a couple people. I said, listen, I have a dog and I can get my dog to do a lot of things. But when I got a little piece of chicken in my hand, I can make my dog do everything. And that's how they are. Marty just dangles in front of them, just like I tell my dog, sit, sit, lay, lay, roll, over, roll, over, beg, beg. <laughs> He'll do that. These, they're, they're just like Pavlov's dogs. They will do whatever they want, whatever Marty wants them to do because they covet something. And when you covet something, nothing comes between you and that. And they will, no matter how wrong Marty is, they will not uh, say it. They will not oppose it. They will not take a stand. They won't even take a moral stand. You had, like I said, you had the Iman said that this guy is, has integrity. A guy that... Um, Blame the mother of a, 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 a child who was molested? What's to blame the mother? And even he, this is morality? Marty said, the people of Lansing City don't even care about what happened to, but in that matter. Are you serious? You said it? Yeah, he said it. Yes, he said it. He said it in the debate. He said, nobody care. The people of Lansing City don't care about that. We... There has been one victim identified. There are many more who haven't been identified. So he blamed that on me. I'm the one who, because this is politics. This is not politics. If no, no matter what, we are supposed to protect the children. 
He made it politics. He made it political. Him and his wife made it political. And that's the reason why things were covered. And I'm just pulling the lid off of it and saying, no. You know, we need to find out what happened by any means necessary because we don't know who you had a monster predator, predator in seven of the eight elementary schools. And how did he get in there? The door was open because of Marty and Laquetta Small, but they don't want to take responsibility. He's never shown any sympathy or empathy for, for, for that particular child who has been identified and the others as well. He's never said, that's a horrible thing. I wish that that never happened. Maybe there's anything that I can do to make things better for these children and, and, or, and, and their family. Has he said that? Has there been any remorse at all? Has there been any, that's something that uh, any human being has. That's what separates us from dogs, from cats, but even they will protect their own. But you know, but I'm, I'm, the point I'm making is that when you suppress what Allah has given you, your instincts to protect your children and humanity, when you suppress that, then what happens, unfortunately, you become subhuman. And that's what he is, and those who follow him are, they are also subhuman. I'm gonna let the brother talk. I talk too much, man. I let the brother talk. So good. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Avram. Go ahead, brother. Not much. My, uh, you know, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wassalatu Wassalamu Ala Rasulullah. Um, you know, I've been uh, watching the the landscape of this political thing because I'm not a politician either. I'm I'm doing this to try to make a, a, a difference. You know, I feel like our people are always left out. You know, they make these promises to us and you know disappear to the next election uh, season and. I feel like uh, if I want to make a change, I need to I need to jump in there and be the change that I want to see. And um, I'm talking as a Muslim now, not as I'm not on here politicking right now. To see the despicable behavior of some of our Muslim brothers and sisters against other Muslims is 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 scary. Number one, because you can fall into shirk. Um, and number two, uh, not that I need their votes or anything, but I it, I've never. I, I've never imagined, um, or I've never seen that before I got into this, where Muslims side with non-Muslims over, really in like anything, especially like politics. Like my problem with some of the brothers that I see, and but what, I, what I'm seeing is they're all getting paid. They all have jobs and um, benefits that come from the taxpayers, all of them, through their man Marty, right? And... Um, the brother will tell you when I first when I first met him, my first words, well, one of my first words to you was, "I don't have no problem with Marty. I've been on him my whole life." And you said you don't have to say nothing about him, but he gonna say something about you, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. And then I made a Facebook post just telling him that you know worry about being a mayor, and he was you know it rubbed him some type of way, which is okay. But, you know, I, honest, I can see some of the brothers and sisters, like, supporting him over Tom Foley. Okay, cool. But now I'm seeing them support, they, like, support Column B. Column C got three Muslims running. Three Muslims. Now, one brother in particular, I'm not going to say his name. I talked to him the other day. Only time I heard from him was for me to meet with Marty and possibly get a job. Because politics is ugly, and if I can avoid it, avoid it. I didn't hear you. Okay, and I, and I declined that. But I didn't hear from you after that. You know what I'm saying? So stuff like that, I've never seen them like that. It's weird. And a lot of us been in prison and stuff. And when we see our Muslim brothers riding with the other side against Muslims, that's like a declaration of war sometimes. That it can get real ugly. But, you know, understanding, you know, some of the mentality in Atlantic City is... uh. You know, it's uh, I'm not mad about anything, but it's, it's uh, it's disgusting to be honest with you, disgusting. Not like again, they don't have to vote for me. I'm not out here really beasting too much. Like vote for me, vote for me, vote for me. Cause like you know, my Islamic side, I'm really not a self promoter like that. But I'm doing what I gotta do to you know to do this you know politics thing so that I can uh, hopefully aid the dean and, and and aid the people. But um, you know, it's 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 disgusting. You know, it's very, really disgusting. You know, you see a Muslim like support, um, you know, uh, Bruce Weeks, Stephanie Marshall and George Tibbet. Like one brother I spoke to the other day. I'm like, bro, you know me. Why would you just say vote column B 
And even if like you see them and you think they would be good for the community, you haven't even talked to none of the Muslims. Now, again, I'm talking as a Muslim, as a politician, whatever, you know, Marty's your man, but as a Muslim, it's weird. All right, so here's the argument today, mm -hmm. right? So what if someone says, uh, I'm going to support these people because I know their qualifications mm -hmm. versus, I don't know the people on your column, but versus, let's say if the people on this column, I don't know them to have that experience. Mm -hmm. What if that's the case? Are we supposed to just vote for you? Well, not just you, anybody, just because they Muslim and mm -hmm. not have... Not because experience, because when you're talking politics, it don't really got nothing to do with Dean and all that, right? Well, I would say this. I believe our Dean shapes our political views, number mm -hmm. one. And then number two, I, I can see that, you know, and I try to make excuses for our brothers and our sisters, but at least come and talk to us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? First of all, to be honest, let's be all the way real. You're doing it because you're getting fed. That's why you're doing it. Because a lot of a lot of a lot of the people supporting them aren't really, you know, I don't know. I I don't think they even dissect things and can tell which candidate is the best. To be honest with you. So you you running for council, right? <laughs> yes, running so for you, council. You gotta feed some people. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my like like I said, it's just it's it's just weird to see. You know, I got Kufar coming back like, yeah, man, you know, uh, such and such, y'all you, cool? Yeah, well, he was saying this, this, and this about you. But I said, Dad, I just seen a brother yesterday, and he was, you know, <laughs> trying, you know, I don't know what you probably to say, like, he wanted to give me a lap dance yesterday, you know. You, what's up, have room, son? You know, and all that. Then so I'm not around. Oh, uh, he's just a puppet for Callaway, you know, I, and I think that's real disrespectful, you know, and again, I'm a very honest person. When I first met him, I told him, you know, I heard this, this, and that. He said, man, you're a grown man. I can't tell you what to do. You know, so every time I have conversations with people, number one, I defend them. I defend them. And a lot of times, I don't even come back and tell them. I protect them and I shut it down. Mm -hmm. But every now and then, I feel like I got to tell him so he can, so he won't, you know, be blindsided by anything. But um, I'm my own man. I say it again, I'm my own man. And if I don't want to do something, I'm not going to do it. If I want to do something, I will. And I, I'm respectful. And I, you know, and I definitely take the support from the brother. And I have a, outside of politics, I have a strong love for this brother. I've been in his house. I've mm -hmm. ate. And I feel sincerity from the brother. Man, law make him better than I think he is. I mean. Yeah. And one thing else I say, when I heard about the situation with Amy Kennedy and Van Drew and all that stuff, it was a long story. And our brother was oppressed. And he never even defended himself. Mm -hmm. So that made me have a lot of respect for him. And that's when I went and met him and talked to him. So I'm mean, like, he's supporting me. And, um, you know, as long as I'm in the right, and as long as he's in the right, I support him. And I'm sure he would advise me if I was wrong, and I would do the same thing. So I'm really not. Everybody talking all this puppet stuff, my own man. Um, you know, I won't be able to look in the mirror. I got nine. I'm a grown man with nine kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not looking for no daddy. <laughs> you know, so that's that's why I stand with it. I'm but, not You know, I feel like we have an opportunity with, well, like I said, I'm not really trying to campaign too much. But with our, with our, sl with our sled, we will have five or six Muslims. I don't really know what Kaleem is, to be honest with you. But it's... I mean... I, okay. Five, five and a half? This <laughs> guy. No, I'm only saying that because I, I heard he was on a board at the church and at Second Baptist Church. Yeah, but I, he's still Muslim. He still uh, pray fast. Okay, I'm, like, I, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm saying I'm not 100 percent sure. Mm -hmm. You start hearing things and seeing things, and you know. So, how many lie? Take your word for it. Okay, so we'll have six Muslims on the city council board. That's that's excellent for the community. Mm -hmm. Why would you go against that? And if you if if you don't really know us that well, come talk to us and advise us. I know I'm walking. I'm about to walk through a, a landmine. You know, one wrong step, my leg could be blown up. So I need my brothers to advise me, you know, how many like, I, and I think some of the, some of the people that want to be leaders in our communities, they're not that smart, but they're always the smartest person in the room. There's nobody to advise them. Mm -hmm. I understand the importance of advice and counsel. Our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I mean, he got revelation from Allah and he still sought counsel from people. So, yeah. you know, um, you know, I, you know, I'm looking forward to this path and getting advice from my brothers and trying to put something on my scale for the Day of Judgment. That's what this is all about. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Well, if I could, like the brother said, he when, when him and I uh, met, 
and you know, I just, you know, he came to me for advice, I would give him advice. Um, he's, you know, came across to me as, um, you know, being sincere, and, and I told him I would help him in any way that I could, and I, and, and I am. And it's and it's no there was no preconditions. It was nothing, you know. Uh, you, you, I'm not. I, I think that's demeaning, and I think it is demeaning to say that you know um, he's 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 uh, my puppet. First of all, men don't puppet men, yeah. and men don't even attempt to puppet men. And but you know that's their sound bite. That's their way of trying to uh, diminish myself. And diminish him, uh, you know, because you know, if if a man allows another man to puppet him, then really, it's he's not a man. Mm-hmm. But uh, but um, their thing is is always um, name calling, trying to de- you know diminish someone's character, uh, so you know they could um, make themselves above above them. Uh, but I don't want to control anyone. One thing that I would, if 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 he's doing something that's that's incorrect i would advise him don't do that don't you know uh do do it another way to try to make it conform into what is right and what is what is best and i would do that but i i wouldn't say well you know if you do if you don't do it my way then you know i'm cutting ties but if you know if he's doing what is right he's doing an honorable thing then he's got my 100 percent support and if he doesn't do something that's right i would admonish him um, and try to show him to, you know, to do it correct and, 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 and make better decisions. Um, and I think that, you know, he, he would do that, not because I said so, but it's in his best interest as a, as a, as a person, as someone who believes in the law. And, and then, you know, he, he would do that. And, but I'm not looking to control anyone. That's not what it is. But people want that, to say that, because that's, you know, <clears throat> that's the, uh, the thing that really takes away from what, they're all about. Um, so people try to deflect what the things that they're doing so everybody look at somebody else while they d- are doing really demeaning things. But I want to say this, if I could, Dr. Al, because I, I, I have to say this, and I want to get back to it because, as I said, it's, it's not about politics. This is about humanity. This is about us being human beings, and it's back to what happened to these children. And people are saying... Um, <clears throat> you know, why are you saying these things? You know, they think that I'm, you know, Marty's uh, telling people and, and his followers are saying, you know, <clears throat> oh, this is all politics. It's not politics. It's not politics. I got it right here. <laughs> the question that needs to be asked, if you ever have an opportunity to ask Marty or anyone who listens to this, ask Marty Small this. Did John Doe number one, was he ever in your house? Just ask that. And the other question is, Laquetta said, Laquetta Small said, she had a conversation. These are not my words, it's in the report. She had a conversation with the child's mother. And she said, I don't think the mother knows that her son is sharing a bed with the monster. So if you didn't think that she know, why didn't you tell her? Why didn't you tell her the horrible thing that was going on. And the other question is, how did you know they shared the bed? And when you found out about it, what did you do? Because in these reports it says, it talked about inappropriate behavior. Is molesting children inappropriate? That's all it is, is inappropriate behavior. Destroying and murdering a child's future, that's all it is. You were, she was talking about transportation slips. This child was being raped and other children were. And she was talking about inappropriate behavior and the mother didn't know. So now we're talking about human beings, a, a, a mother, more, even more than, than, than most fathers. A mother, that's what separates a mother from a father. A mother is very, very, very instinctively a mother to all children. And she, and she would see her child in every other child. And she would want to make sure that every other child had the same level of protection and love that she gave her children. So what did she do? 
she suppressed her motherly instincts that Allah had given her and she put her own personal gain in her husband above what was more important and that was to protect a child's life. So that, that, that report's from the case? This report that I have right here is their lawsuit, but there's a 95 page report from the FBI where it gives detailed information about what happened. The FBI, people need to understand something, right? Because Marty is making this big misinformation and people are buying it because they really want to. But people understand who know a little bit about, little, have a little bit of knowledge about uh, the federal government and the state government. They know that the federal government can only f prosecute federal crimes. Can they help state with investigations and they do? Yes, but they don't charge them, whoever the, 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 those who have violated the law, they don't charge them with federal crimes if it was a state crime. So they prosecuted the monster, Kayon Frazier, for all of his federal crimes. Molesting that those children, because I want to make sure that it's clear, is not a child. It is children in plural because they don't even know the FBI. They don't even know how many victims there, there are. There were. So they prosecuted what was in their jurisdiction. The other jurisdiction is the state. The state charge. If you rape a child, that's a state statute that has been violated. That's not a federal statute, not unless you go across the state line and then do that. Now, if you went from uh, Atlantic City and you went over to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and you, and you had, and you raped this child across the line, now you got a federal charge. Okay, so the major crimes that took place with raping the child, uh, having group sex and all these things, those are state charges. And he hasn't been charged with that. And I know why. And I'm, I'm trying to tell people why. And the reason why he hasn't been charged with that, because it would be the noose around Murphy's neck and Marty and Laquetta Small's neck. Because they're all tied together. Because there were two state entities that this monster worked for. And both of them were under Murphy's authority. That's the Department of Education, which is his high, one of his highest cabinet positions. And the other one is the Department of Child and Protection of per Permanency. And that was formerly known as DIFUS. Where Murphy signed his paycheck. When he was arrested at his at his place where he uh, lived also along when he also lived at Marty's house as well. He was an employee of the state of New Jersey and Phil Murphy signed his check. So Murphy is going to protect himself. And so therefore he's got to protect Marty because if Marty goes, Marty Laquetta goes down, then he's going down. So they haven't charged him. The reason, another reason why, and I'm, and I, I really feel strongly about this. The reason why the the, the federal government, the, the FBI, came into it because they didn't trust Damon Tyner, because they knew he was tainted with conflict because of his political ties. So originally, when he was arrested, the feds were going to just let the state take the case because they know they had enough, they had enough crimes that this guy had committed that could put his lights out for the rest of his life. He would never get out of prison. But they knew, they found out that they were playing political footsies and the feds came in and said, nope, we're taking this case. And when they charged him with, his, with uh, all the federal violations and now what has not happened, the state hasn't done a damn thing because this guy is 28 years old. He's facing 15 to 30. He's going to probably get somewhere in the middle of that. He'll get out as a still a uh, young man, probably in his late 40s. He'll be able to get out and continue and go back to his ways. So that's why he should be given, you know, dead man walking position. He should never be able to get out of prison because this guy has done a lot of damage to a lot of children. And the state of New Jersey is sitting there silently because Murphy's protecting himself and because of his, you know, the, the, the albatross around his neck.
Is Marty and LaQuetta small? He's got to protect them also. Because, as I said, we know. And then what Kayon Frazier is going to tell, how did this guy come from North, automatically just gets a job in Atlantic City School District? How? You know how uh, uh, clannish we are in Atlantic City? How did it happen? How did that door open for him? And then at the same time, he was raping our children. And then they, the, 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 the Department of uh, Child and Protective uh, Permanence, diapers. They hired him. They hired him after LaQuetta said inappropriate behavior. So how did that happen, bro? You don't get a job in the state in the city. First of all, we understand that, and you also don't get a job in the state now unless somebody's got to open that door for you. So I say this: the children in the state of New Jersey are not safe under Phil Murphy because he didn't protect the children, and he still has it. There's no doubt about it. In the city of Atlantic City, there's not one child safe in the schools because they never found out how this happened. They never investigated. They haven't give. They didn't give not one bit of help for that child or his family. They haven't done anything as we speak right now to give any aid and comfort to that 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 child whose life has been so damaged. They haven't done anything for his siblings and his mother to help them. You know what they did? You know what Marty Small and Laquetta Small and his, his, his minion of, of dogs did? They harassed that woman and the children, and they had, they had to leave the city because they wanted to protect Marty. And they put their arms around Marty and Laquetta. No, but you should put your arms around these children and, them, and, that mother and the rest of these children and find out. Maybe it might be some of their children or grandchildren, nieces and nephews that maybe Kayon Frazier had his way with. But they don't care about that. They only care about that piece of chicken that I described that Marty's dangling over them. And that's why they're subhuman. They have no morals. They have no integrity. They have no principles. These people are horrible. They're worse than Marty because they cover for what Marty did. Just like Marty and LaCorda covered for what Kayon did for their own interests and never looked out for the children. That's why I'm so upset. That's why I'm so passionate, because all of those children are my children and your children and every other person's children on this planet. When something somebody tries to harm a child, everybody's supposed to come for their aid. And people are trying to say, oh, well, well, it was the mother's fault. The mother allowed this to happen. That's not true. It's not even close to true. It's not even something to, to even talk about. It's a disgrace. But even if a mother, and there has been some instances where mothers have given their children to predators to, do, to have their way. Does that absolve the predator? Does, does that absolve the person who knew what was going on and didn't stop it and do anything about it? No. We are obligated as human beings. And there's a thing of, of law where if you see something happen, you don't do anything about it. You can get charged with it. That's for a reason, because why? That's the, that's, the, that's the law that the law has given. We are, have no choice. We must protect our children. And, and people can say whatever they want. It's not politics. They made it politics to cover their, their inability to do what was right and to blame others. You want to blame the mother? You're a disgrace. You're despicable. That's what Marty, that's why my, 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 I'm so passionate about how, how I feel about him and others. Because now you see how low they have got, they have, they have went to protect their piece of chicken in Marty's hand. They're a disgrace. So now, so the argument from them would be that you're using that as a political tool, like Moon or something. Yeah, because Marty must be stopped. You can't let this guy ascend or stay in a position of power and authority when he had let him and his wife let children get, have their lives and their innocent murder. They must be stopped. You, not, you can't let these people stay in a position of power and authority when you see that they don't even protect children. Not, that's, what, that's what disqualifies them, not only from being the mayor and the, and the superintendent of the school, it disqualifies you from being a human being. You're nothing. If you don't protect the innocence of the child, you're absolutely nothing. And that's my position. And, that's, and I'm going to stand on it because that's morally right and we know it. 
you know, there's something Allah doesn't even have to tell us. You know it because he's getting, he, he put it in us. He put that inside of us. And anybody that doesn't, it feels otherwise, they are suppressing what Allah has given them. And that's what Marty and, and, and those who want that piece of chicken in his hand, that's what they have done. They're suppressing what Allah has given them because they covet that piece of chicken. And they don't understand that if that piece of chicken is decreed for you to get, you're going to get it. No matter how high you put it up for that dog to jump up and get it, if it's decreed for him to get it, he's going to get it. And if it's not decreed to get it, and no matter how close you get it to him, he ain't getting it. Because Allah said that's, that was his decree. He's not getting it. So who do we believe? Who do we believe? We say we believe in Allah. And we believe in his decree. And that's irresistible. And it's an impossible to overcome. So do we believe in Allah? Or do we think that that piece of chicken that Marty can, can determine if you get it or not? So they have, de they have determined that Marty's the one who is. But they, that's why I say you got to be careful. We as Muslims, they, we have guardrails. And you got to be careful not to go past those guardrails. Because when you go past those guardrails, now you're in shirk land. Allah put those the guardrails there for, to protect us from our own you know, uh, in, you know, my, the, you know, the, from the shaitan that is in us. But if you tear those guardrails down, you're done. You're finished as a human being, and you're gonna have to answer for that. And that's what I fear, and I beg Allah that that doesn't happen to me or any of or any of us. I beg that for us, that we, you know, we we accept the protection that Allah has given us, and I beg for that for all of us. At me, if I, if I could go back to something too earlier. Um, if you know, I, I, if the brother's Muslim, I don't want to say he's not Muslim, but sometimes you know, well, Islamically, you can commit shirk with your belief system or with your actions. And sometimes when you you know, when we see our brothers, you know, going to church, I mean, not not just him, but just Muslims in general. We got Muslims who go with their mother to church on Mother's Day, stuff like that. You know, you see certain stuff from them, you know, it kind of puts doubt in us. So I don't want to be irresponsible. You know, put that out there about the brother, but there's some things that I've seen and heard that made me say that. But if he's not, man, Lord, forgive me. But we really have to be careful with our actions because your actions show what's in your heart. And when you see Muslims siding with the non Muslims because they're getting some type of doing it from it, or just because that's their man, we know that's not that's not how this thing goes. Our allegiance is to Allah and His Messenger and those so who I'm are saying. in agreement with Allah and His Messenger. And we know that the, as the law says in the Quran, Inna mal mu'minuna. Ikhwah, that indeed the believers are brothers. Now, um, not to do no class or nothing, but the word ikhwan can be used for plural for akhi also. Mm -hmm. Ikhwah is actually, uh, Allah used ikhwah in that verse instead of ikhwan because ikhwah is a stronger brotherhood. Yeah. It's a stronger brotherhood than the brotherhood from blood. So, you know, when you start seeing pe people moving like that, it's, it's, very, it's very dangerous. I mean, Allah protect us from that. I mean. And if I could say one thing in closing, and I would be remiss if I didn't. And that is about the Muslim holidays that was established uh, about 17 years ago. Yeah, and Yeah, alhamdulillah. But, but, I, but people try to give me credit for it. And I don't take credit for it because it's, it wasn't, you know, I supported it. But the, the people who really did this, the movement was led by my deceased brother, Rahim Allah, Sister Najla. They were at the forefront. And they were the ones who brought the Muslims together who was on that school board. Um, and, and they brought them all together when there was a lot less Muslims than there are now. Yeah, yeah. But after, you know, uh, my, my, my fall from, uh, uh, from, from leadership, from the political leadership, and I went to prison, and, um, and some, some of the other people in my family also went. And when we lost uh, control of the school board, and when those non-Muslims came back under the leadership and following of Marty and his group and that Joe Jacobs thing, what, is it, what happened immediately? They took the Muslim holidays away. Now, and that, now today, one, yeah, go ahead. That, that, that's one thing I mean, will always give you credit for it, though. And, but, yeah. That's, that's the only thing that, I'll be honest with you, because back when all that stuff was going on, way before whatever happened two, three years ago, right? Going back 2012. I was probably the main one in the master telling him, like, yo, you need to hire Brother Farouk. This is when he first came home, right? I said, why don't you make Brother Farouk the president of the master? 
And then he was like, you think so? You think so? I said, yeah, I really think so. You, you can help a lot. Like, it's, you need help. And he was actually considering, and I don't know what happened. And later on, that's when this whole theory about, he's trying to take the mask. I said, I don't think he's trying to take the mask. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the, the thing for me, and for me personally, because I don't, I don't do this to cause no division, right? But you know the idea for the prophet say sign? He so. actually talks about how if you know there's division between two brothers, mm -hmm. that's when it's permissible for you to tell a lie. You go mm -hmm. tell one, yo man, Amin says really nice things about you. And then you go back to Amin, yo, you know, Farouk says really nice. And then in hopes that you get some yes. reconciliation. I mean, that ain't what this is, but <laughs> it's at the same yeah. time. That's what I always want. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, because no matter what, it happened and one, I mean, <clears throat> he, times he was leading the Salat of the Master during Ramadan and, you know, anytime I see some division, it's always I hear somebody say, oh, Farouk's like this, or the other side, I'll be somewhere, they're like, oh, man, you deal with that that mean, God, and I'm like, yo, like, we can get a lot more done together. However, I do know how hard it is to work with strong personalities, whether his or yours, I mean, I ain't never had no issue working with you, but if somebody else had it, I can understand it. So I don't really personally know Marty like that. I mean, he cool with me, but I don't, I mean, I don't live in Lane City, but my issue amongst us, just the Muslims, the black Muslims mm -hmm. in particular, now I hope that, you know, we are able at some point to get all that straightened out. And it won't be. We, but we have, it. I think we have, the potential is clearly there, um, you know, to, uh, we should have the halal food in, in, in the school system. We should have our holidays that we had before. We should, but people need to know there was, you know, and, and like I said, I'm not going to take, you know, credit for things that I didn't do, but I did support what my brother and, and Nasla did. Mm -hmm. And I always tried to be in the background because I was on city council and they were on the school board. And uh, yes, from the back, I was pushing, to, you know, try to uh, make that uh, ha happen. But as I said, the people who that now the Muslims are embracing, meaning I'm talking about Marty, he was the one who was with the with the leadership of the Atlantic City School District. That immediately when we were, when we left, they took the holidays away, and there's a lot more Muslims in 2021 than there are than there was in 20 and 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 20 and, and, and 2005. You know what I mean? So. How, how, I'm sorry, they're gone now? We don't have any? No. No. It's, it's called an excuse absence. It went from the whole school shutting down, yeah, yeah. like they do for Christmas and Easter and, you know, uh, 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 you know during the Jewish house. And, and I'm not trying to take away, you know, listen, we, all of that coexisted. We had our holiday. They included the Muslim holiday. And then immediately after we left, they took the Muslim holidays away because they really never wanted it to be. But now, all of a sudden, like I said, how the hell is the Muslims embracing and, and hugging Marty Small when he, he was the one and his whole group was the one that made sure we didn't have any Islamic holidays within our school. And we still don't have it. And we still don't have halal food in our, in our schools. So how does that be? So why are we embracing someone who has done things to negative things to, to uh, take away from what was established. And then they took it away. And we are wrapping our arms around people who have harmed the Muslim community. So that's what it is. That's the un un unfortunate, but that's the reality. So Muslims, if you want to hug Marty, if that's what you want to do, you're going to do it knowing that he has done some foul things to the Muslim community. So you then make sure you know, I'm gonna make sure when you do it, your eyes are wide open. You're not gonna be able to say you didn't know. Now you know. He did some foul things to the Muslims in our community. He didn't. He didn't open up his mouth when they when they took those holidays away. Why? Because his wife was feeding. She was coming up. He he had a nice salary with with the school board at that time. Didn't say anything. But now all of a sudden. Marty Small, Ramadan Mubarak, Salaamu Alaikum. What? Are you serious? This is the one who conspired with the people who had problems with Muslims having a holiday. So this is not, 
what I'm saying, this is back. We went from a holiday, days off, to our children, oh, you know, little Muhammad, he can have an excused absence. Yeah, you can go ahead. But, you know, Christmas, Easter, Yom Kippur, they can have it. And they should have it. And we should have it also. But be wise. So when you politically get involved in politics and you start supporting, be careful who you wrap your arms around. Because you might be wrapping your arms around, you know, a snake that will bite you. Mm, that's the reality. Okie dokie. Thank you, bro. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's only fair. Alhamdulillah. I'm going to take my side. Alhamdulillah.